This is the Link Station S1, and it intrigued me because on paper, this is the NAS device that everyone says they want. It has four bays, an Intel N97 processor, meaning it supports Intel QuickSync, eight gigabytes of DDR5 non-ECC RAM, and two NVMe slots running at Gen 3x2 speeds. It has a few USB ports, two two and a half gigabit NICs, but most importantly, it runs Unraid. Unraid is the pre-installed operating system, but what's nice about this setup is it's kind of designed for you to run your own operating system as the USB drive that runs the NAS is easily accessible under a magnetic cover. I have a lot of thoughts on this, and it's ultimately the best and worst part of this device. But before we get to that, let's look at the device itself. What we're looking at is a prototype LinkStation S1 currently going through crowdfunding, which we'll talk about later. The S1 is very premium and has a unique design compared to a lot of pre-built NAS devices. The drive slots are on top of the device, hidden by a magnetic cover. The side where you put the NVMe drives, RAM, and USB slot for the operating system is magnetic too, making it easily accessible. They're a little flimsy if I'm being honest, and I feel like the magnets should be a little stronger than they are, but for a NAS that's designed to sit in a corner, it's not the worst. The fan, funny enough, is on the bottom of the device and it's pretty loud. This is one of the loudest pre-built NAS devices I've used, but from a fan perspective and not from a hard drive perspective, which is kind of weird, but more on that later. There's an LCD screen on the front that has some information that you'll probably never use, a few LED lights for drive activity, and overall, I like the design. Hate the fan placement, but I do like the design. Now, Unraid will make or break this system for you. You can run TrueNAS Scale on here, but I probably wouldn't since it lacks ECC memory. And don't kill me, but I wouldn't personally run ZFS without ECC RAM. You can run Open Media Vault, but I probably wouldn't run that either. So that leaves us with Unraid. Unraid is a very different operating system than you're probably used to. The latest version of Unraid supports ZFS pools, but like I said before with TrueNAS Scale, I wouldn't personally run ZFS without ECC memory, so that wasn't an option for me. That leaves me with an Unraid array, which is not RAID, it's Unraid. With Unraid, you set up a parity drive that has to be the same size as your largest drive in your array, and then you just add drives to it. You can define the type of file system that you'd like to use, but you're physically writing the files to disk. So if this device was to die for any reason, you can take the hard drive out, put it in a system that can read the file system you selected, and you would see your files. This can be a downside, believe it or not. You're setting a max file size based on the drives you add to the device. Using the four terabyte drives that I have installed as an example, if I tried to add, let's say, a backup archive that was eight terabytes, I couldn't. RAID simply wins out in this area because the data is striped across the drives. With an unraid array, you're not doing that. You're writing the files directly to the disk. This also means that if you're not actively reading or writing data to the disk, you can technically put it to sleep, which is why the drives will actually be quieter than if you were using RAID, but keep in mind, you'll hear the fan because like I said, it's pretty loud. There are other downsides too. Not only the file size limit, but the read-write performance isn't as good as RAID since the drives are working independently rather than together. So the performance you'll get without any caching is about the performance of one individual drive. This is why something like 10 GBE isn't important for a device like this. You'll never see that type of performance with Unraid for read speeds, especially with hard drives. So in my opinion, it's just not worth it. So two, two and a half gigabit NICs should be perfect. Now I classify Unraid and TrueNAS scale as 1A and 1B in terms of DIY NAS operating systems. And which you use is dependent on your requirements. But there's an elephant in the room that we need to discuss. Unraid is not free. So if you've noticed in this video, I've been using a trial version. This is because you get 30 days to trial Unraid before having to purchase a full license. Now the device comes with a card that will give you a full license of Unraid for a year. So what happens after a year? Basically, you will continue to get security updates until the version you're on is end of life, but you'll stop getting feature updates. Now feature updates aren't released regularly. So if you're on version 7.1 after a year and version 7.2, doesn't come out until a year after that, awesome, you don't have to upgrade. But you have to keep in mind that there's probably going to come a point where you have to renew the license. Not necessarily for feature updates, 
But once your version is end of life, you're going to need security updates. To me, this is the biggest problem because if you were to compare this to something like Synology DSM, you're getting security updates and feature updates for the lifetime of that device. And if you've ever owned a NAS device, you'll know that many people keep them for five plus years. So you might be looking at one, two, maybe even three renewals to keep your device up to date from a security perspective. Now that's the downside of Unraid, but the benefit of Unraid is it's generally a pretty great operating system. It has great support, a ton of plugins, native Docker support, VMs, apps, just about everything you could want. You don't have to question Unraid. It's a great NAS operating system, but you can install Unraid on DIY hardware. So why would you purchase this over DIY hardware? At the Kickstarter price of $429, this is a pretty powerful device. At the MSRP, it gets a little harder to justify, but at the Kickstarter price, it's a good deal if you get it. There are problems with Kickstarters and they're being used as marketing tools these days, which hurts consumers. And there are horror stories around them. I can't give you advice on this. There was a device that looked interesting. They reached out to me to review it and I wanted to check it out. I didn't have to put my hard earned money on the line for this. So this is what I'll say. Robbie at NAS Compares did a great video on Kickstarters and why NAS manufacturers are using them as a marketing tool. If you're interested in purchasing this device, take the 10 minutes to watch that video because it will give you the insight needed to understand the risks you're accepting by funding this. If you wanna live dangerously, you can buy the device without watching that. But you're gonna make Robbie upset and you don't wanna upset him or his seagulls. So trust me, just watch the video. Other than Kickstarter, this is a powerful pre-built NAS device where you don't have to question the operating system, which quite honestly is rare to say. Most of these pre-built NAS devices have great hardware and suspect software. That's not the case here. Unraid is a great NAS operating system. Is the package better than a pre-built Synology? It's more powerful. It's cheaper at the Kickstarter price, but no, I don't think it is. I'd probably prefer a DS923 Plus, but in unique situations where you might want to transcode or use VMs, this might actually be a better option for you. I hope this helped out if you were interested in this device, but if you made it this far, thank you very much for watching. I'll see you guys next time.